Being very entitled and controlling, narcissists have no difficulty stepping all over your personal boundaries, so that's why I put together an extensive video class called This Is Me. It has 25 videos, written documents, guided questions. I'm gonna teach you how to have healthy boundaries. There's a link below, and I hope you'll find it to be quite therapeutic. One of the best byproducts that I can say about me having the work that I do as a therapist is that I get to learn so many things from individuals that I've spoken with, whether it's in my therapy office or people that just know me and know that I'm a therapist and they talk to me about personal issues. And I get to glean information from these individuals regarding the things that they've been through and then what kind of truths that we can pick up on so that the rest of us can, can learn from them and grow and move in a forward direction. Now, there's one very common theme that I keep running across as I talk with individuals about some of the narcissistic people that have been in their life. And that is a very high percentage of narcissists, obviously the overt, but even sometimes the covert narcissists can just come across as sheer bullies. Uh, they, they take it as their prerogative to say, somebody needs to keep you in line and it becomes my task to do so. And if I have to be mean, if I have to be harsh, if I have to be uh, punitive toward you, I'm very willing to go into that space. And narcissists many times have appointed themselves as the keeper of truth, if you will, it's actually alternate reality, so that they can keep you in line. And I've heard from people who, let's say, uh, I recall one person that would say, yes, my mother was that bully inside my family. Mean and harsh and overrode all of the things that the dad said, and, and this fella and his siblings had so much strain and difficulty that was a result of that. I recall another person who would say, well, my own father was the bully in my family and he was harsh and to, to say that he didn't listen to me would be a gross understatement. And so I married someone who is almost exactly like that and he had a great deal of pain and misery until finally he came into his uh, uh, middle-aged years and began to have some great insight and began moving away from that. I recall another situation where uh, there would be a woman who grew up in a family where she had older brothers and a father, and the father trained, if you will, the brothers to be uh, forceful and harsh, and she was on the receiving end of awful, and when I say awful, I mean awful abuse at the hands of the people inside her own family that you would like to think were going to be her protectors. I can recall another person talking with me about dad who was... The, the nice guy on the outside, but then a tyrant on uh, the inside behind the scenes. I can recall people talking about having an older sibling who was abusive, uh, people at work who knew that they could get away with overbearing and unfair treatment. And I strongly suspect that many of you can say, oh yeah, I've been around these individuals. And as I talk with these individuals, various themes come to the forefront that tell us what's really going on inside of that bully and what we need to understand because like I say, bullies feel like it's their prerogative to control you. And we can scratch our head thinking, wait a minute, the more I see what's happening on the inside of these people, the more absurd it is that they, that they have then uh, uh, pronounced themselves as the one who must be in charge and specifically in charge over you. Let's begin by recognizing that when someone comes across as this awful, tyrannical bully, that's someone who's carrying a great deal of their own internal pain from the inside out. These individuals guaranteed were bullied themselves by someone, usually several someones, and that's become their norm. They have a, a, a huge amount of psychological pain that they're sitting on and they have not been able to come to terms with. Bullies are defined by fear. They, they don't trust. That's the way that you can tell their fear. And then they, they have thick walls of defensiveness. They can't receive input. Again, they're threatened by your differences. Bullies are defined by shame. They were on the receiving end of many shame messages. 
If you uh, slip up or if you show yourself to be deficient or if you're just too, a little too different, you're going to be on the receiving end of many insults. So they themselves decided, well, I'll become the one who gets to pronounce the shame. That somehow makes mine um, easier to bear. It seemed like a, a ground neutral kind of a thing for them. Bullies falsely assume that their anger and their mistreatment toward other individuals will somehow solve their own inner tensions. If I can just unload my anger, if I can just let people know how mad I am and how they're making my life miserable, then I'll walk away feeling vindicated. It's Much of that's on an unconscious level or a subconscious level, but that's how they process things, the life. Bullies uh, have this thick defensive shield that's so uh, so uh, impenetrable that it's very unlikely that you're going to be able to receive, uh, they're going to be able to receive input from you. In other words, uh, they, they don't listen well. And then on top of that, they have no particular reason or need in their mind to hear from you. They have no empathy. Bullies have no internal peace. They have no internal calmness to draw upon. And I want you to think about that. This is somebody who thinks, I need to be in charge of you, but on the inside, they're defined by chaos. And that makes no sense, but somehow, because they can come on in a very strong and overpowering way, they think, this makes me a leader? This makes me someone who needs to be heard? I don't think so, but that's how they process these individuals have a pain management strategy that's based upon dis, uh, displacement. If they can put their pain onto you, then that means that uh, eliminates their own internal pain. But at the same time, they become thoroughly embarrassed or even humiliated or frightened when you let them know that you're onto them and you see through some of their bravado and you recognize it for what it is. It's not nearly the strength that they want you to, uh, they want to portray. I'm hoping that if you have this mind uh, that say, uh, or this experience that says, I've been on the receiving end of the bullying, that you can develop a mindset of a very different nature that has a very different angle with respect to what strength actually is. When we talk about a person who has been bullied, but then they say, but I want to grow from that. I want to grow out of that and I want to be the better alternative. There are multiple things that uh, that can show us that that person is in fact going in that much better direction. The person on Team Healthy who says, I I'm going to grow, is first of all going to be willing to acknowledge that internal pain. They're not going to run away from it like the bully. In growth, you can ask yourself the question, when I've been on the receiving end of pain or when I've had disappointments, what can I learn from it? What, what's that pain or what are those experiences trying to tell me? What kind of message can I receive from that? When they feel angry, growing individuals will say, well, I'm going to give myself permission to feel angry. There are times when anger is warranted, but I don't want to be destructive with it. I want to see if I can turn that anger into a healthy assertiveness and firmness so that I can stand upon good principles and I don't have to uh, to rip other individuals apart while I'm doing so. As a contrast to that bully, that individual who's growing can say, you know, when I have my alone times, then what I'm going to do is I'm going to take that as a moment to nurture myself. Bullies don't have any kind of self-nurturance. And when they're alone, what they do is they grouse within themselves. Healthy individuals will say, well, I'm going to take my alone time and use it for reflective thinking. And I'm going to be somebody that ponders the deeper uh, meanings of life. Uh, healthy individuals take no joy in belittling or demeaning other individuals, but they do take great joy in showing kindness and letting other individuals know when you're in my presence, I want to be your safe person. The bully wants to silence other individuals. The healthy person says, I don't feel like I'm helping anyone by simply remaining silent. I'm going to speak my truth. I'm going to talk about who I am, and I'm going to, uh, to openly declare if there are some negative things that have happened to me, I know that I'm on, I can go into a different path. I'm going to be a spokesperson for, uh, for that better path and what it stands for and how I'm going to lean into that and how I can bring as many people along with me as possible. 
Healthy individuals, unlike bullies, have a, a respect for boundaries. And to that healthy person, they understand that boundaries is more than just being able to say no to someone. But boundaries means you get to define who you who you are, you get to define yourself, and then you get to lean into it. That's uh, the beginning point for your interactions with other individuals. And you don't feel like you have to uh, uh, to go along just to get along. But instead, you decide, you know, here here's my healthy initiative. I'm going to stand in it. In addition, the healthy person can say, my gentleness, my kindness, my empathy, and even my own angst can become foundational stones that I can build upon as I find my own internal strength and resolve. Now, I know that so many of you, like these many individuals that I've uh, mentioned right there at the beginning, and I could add a, a, a long, long list of people that I've spoken with, so many of you could say, I, I don't like the way that I was bullied or am currently being bullied, but I'm hoping that you can take your set of circumstances and realize other people have gained insight and awareness into the mind of that bully. They've gained insight into what their healthier alternatives could be. And they've decided, I'm going to sign up for that as well. I'm, I'm hoping that uh, when you are on the receiving end of that bully's efforts to try to control you, you can uh, think within yourself, I refute that person's message of dominance I embrace the power of my own internal peace. You ever think of internal peace as being power-based? It is in the sense that it uh, taps into your strength, your goodness, your dignity, and you deserve to think that way. I'm hoping you will embrace love and all that goes with it. I'm hoping you will embrace the reasonableness of who you are. And when you do so, you can let the bully know you want to control me? I'm not playing along with that. I have uh, a, an agenda, and the agenda is self-care. The agenda is self-love. I know that perhaps that's not something you, the bully, will understand, but it's something that I dedicate my life to. Now, I hope the video such as this can give you some good food for thought. Um, plenty of individuals who have been through this. I wish that I could say that this is rare, but it's not. Uh, but I'm hoping just like these people I'm referencing, uh, they've been through it and they've uh, come through on the other side. I'm hoping you can too. If you've not already subscribed to this channel, I would encourage you to do so. And uh, in, uh, in doing so, we'll keep more videos coming along. And I hope there's a cumulative effect as you continue to watch them. If you have a need for therapy, you know that I've been sponsored for years by the people at BetterHelp.com. I am a therapist, of course, and so I believe in that. I'm retired now. Um, but it, uh, we have uh, the BetterHelp people have a whole team of licensed professional therapists that can assist you. There's a link below that will take you to their site. There's, uh, uh, it's affordable, it's accessible, it's uh, effective. And please, if you have the need, uh, seek out somebody that can help you sift out the things that I'm talking with you about today. In addition, I also have my courses, and these are meant for, uh, like signing up a class, they're meant for your own personal reflection. It would take a lot of work for you. I put a lot of work into them. Each course has like 25 videos or more, and uh, each video has, guide, uh, has a, a written documentation, guided questions. We have Ready, Set, Connect about making good connections with people. This is me about establishing those boundaries. Free to be, finding yourself despite the controllers. We also have my webinars and on our website we have access to my podcast and uh, many, many articles and books and so there are plenty of resources. If you've been exposed to that bully that says, I, need, I feel like I need to control you, uh, there's one word for you to memorize and that is no. That's not going to happen. I'm, I'm committed to my own growth, and in doing so, I'm hoping you can uh, see them for who they are. They're terribly pain-filled individuals, but instead, you can decide, I'm going to go into a very different direction that's based upon goodness, decency, our, our um, uh, mantra here, DRC, dignity, respect, and civility, and in doing so, I'm hoping it would position you to be a person of peace.